The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to everyone this morning, to those at home on Zoom, on those on the telephone, and later on those who will join on YouTube. Who could have imagined that a year ago uh, we would be doing this? We've traveled a long way. We're grateful to Hillary, who's turned into a techie and is operating here this morning, and it has widened our ministry. There's a very special welcome this morning to Dr. Tim Peppiot, who is with us briefly, just two months, uh, as an ordinant. That's to say, he's on his journey to ordination, and he's not only preaching uh, this morning, but also going to lead our discussions tomorrow evening. We're sorry, uh, Tim, that you've not been able to meet so many people in people, but you are, are very welcome here. And so we're going to have our first hymn. The choir is going to lead us now, Lift High the Cross. So as we prepare to meet Christ in his word and sacrament, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we hear the readings from the Word of God from Dodi, our church warden, before the Gospel and the Sermon. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will give, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter five. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to Jerusalem to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world 
will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my heart is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others, says, others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Well, hello and good morning. As Terry kindly introduced me, I'm with you for a couple of months. I have that privilege. I'm having a good time and I wanted to thank you very much for your warm welcome to me. I've learned a lot, especially from Philip, and I will always remember my time with you. Thank you. So here we are today at the climax of our Lent series, Walking into Glory. We're at the point on Jesus's journey where he's nearing his destination. And we've journeyed with him along various stops along the way. Philip preached on Jesus's baptism and time in the wilderness. And he reminded us that God is with us both in hard times, like during lockdown, and in good times, in times of blessing, like when we can finally get together to meet face to face next week. Hooray. Hillary likened uh, Jesus's road to the cross with our personal pilgrimage. And she encouraged us to reflect on the experiences that we have had, the people that we have met, in order to learn from them and become better people. Then Terry led us through the time when Jesus got to Jerusalem and he entered the temple. And he taught us that God is not so much found in a place, but in the person of Jesus. Last week, Sally spoke about the time when Jesus met Nicodemus, recalling that we need to be born again, become like little children, and learn to live in new ways. All these stops on Jesus's journey have been important, but today we arrive at the climax. This is the center of our Lent banner. This is where Jesus has been heading all along. Suppose you were an Olympic athlete and you trained all your life for the 100 meter final and you were now standing on the start line. You'd say to yourself, okay, this is it. Well, this was Jesus's moment. He says in verse 23 of our passage, the hour has come. In verse 27, for this very reason, I came to this hour. In verse 30, now is the time. Significantly, in his gospel, John has mentioned three times previous to this that Jesus' hour had not come. Do you remember in chapter 2, at the wedding in Cana, he said to his mother, my hour has not yet come. Then in chapter 7 in Jerusalem, people tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because, John says, his hour had not yet come. Then in chapter 8, the Pharisees challenged him, yet no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. His hour for what, I wonder? 
The controversy about his life had been simmering and now it was reaching boiling point. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead and this provoked the ruling Jewish council to want to kill him because many of their own people were beginning to believe in Jesus. He was becoming famous. Jesus, it seemed, had the world at his feet. And so we read in our passage today that now some outsiders, some Gentile Greeks, were also becoming interested in Jesus. And it's their request to see him which prompts Jesus's response. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And this is an important moment for us today, because when Jesus says the hour has come in response to the Greeks, it means that salvation is now for Gentiles like me and you. The doors of salvation have now opened wide to include everyone. Jesus then goes on to talk about wheat to help us understand more why this is the now moment in his life. And most of us would get this, wouldn't we? If we put a dead looking seed or kernel into the ground and bury it, somehow it comes back to life. And one kernel of wheat can grow into a stalk and a head that produces 50 kernels. Amazing. One kernel apparently dies to produce an abundant harvest. Life comes through death. And Jesus is teaching here that what's true in the natural is true in the spiritual. His death brings eternal life to us and relationship with God. The wheat therefore points to Jesus' accomplishment on the cross when he died for our sins, meaning that we can experience the beginnings of that eternal life now. So if the Greeks mean that you and I are included in Jesus' kingdom now, and if the wheat means that his death gives us eternal life now, what on earth does that have to do with Jesus walking into his glory? What our sermon series is all about. The hour has come for me to be glorified. At this end point on his journey with the world at his feet, Jesus chose a very different sort of crown. A crown of thorns for his coronation, not a crown of jewels. How could that be glorious? Well, there's an answer for us today in verse 31 of our passage. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. The cross was the decisive moment in Jesus's battle with Satan, who will now be driven out of his influence in the world. The cross was a victory, even though it didn't look like one. This was a moment of transfer of power and ownership from Satan to Jesus's kingdom. The powers of sin and shame and fear and death, all Satan's weapons and strategies were broken. As Jesus paid for our sins, he wore our shame that day when he died a shameful death and he conquered death when he rose again. And Jesus's glory is enhanced at every moment and in every way when Satan's power is broken over our lives and in the world. So on March the 21st, 2021, Jesus walks into his glory as we surrender 
our selfish control of our lives as we receive God's loving forgiveness for our sins. As we let him take our fears and our shame and as we install him as king of our lives. Isaiah prophesied, didn't he, of the increase of his government, there will be no end. Jesus will govern me more and more. He will govern you more and more. And he will be glorified more and more. I finished today with a story of a young man who asked a wise old man, a bit like Terry, what does it mean to be crucified with Christ? Especially as most Christians today aren't actually going to be martyred. And the old man thought for a moment and he replied, to be crucified with Christ means three things. Never looking back, always looking forward and following Jesus. Secondly, never going back, say goodbye to the world now. And thirdly, having no future plans of your own, because you're in God's hands now. Never looking back, never going back, and no independent planning. Jesus walked into glory through the cross, and he can walk into more of his glory today as we take little steps forward. Not looking back, not going back, involving Jesus in all that we do. And Lent is a call to those little steps of repentance and consecration. And today, let's do that. Let's give him those things where he is Lord. Our shame, our regrets, our sins, our plans. Jesus' time is for now, for us, for eternal life, and for him to be glorified. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Now with the universal church, the whole church, we confess our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we are led in our prayers by Timothy Gaston. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God 
the source of all life and holiness. Father, we come before you with our hopes and fears, our needs, our concerns, and our thanks. Bring your blessings on our church, our families, and our community. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Bless all ministers of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on a sure foundation. We give you thanks for all who minister in our parish, for Philip, Hilary, Terry, and Sally. And we pray those who are called to ministry, those in training, and especially today for Tim. Our gospel tells us about a grain of wheat and how it grows. So we pray for our faith that it too may grow and that the light of Christ will continue to be seen in our parish. We give thanks for the Hospital of St Cross for centuries of Christian witness and care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we sit in the middle of a pandemic that affects every nation on earth. We pray for a sense of caring and sharing for each other. For those nations that have much to show, that care for those most in need. In this unique situation, no one is safe until all are vaccinated. So we give thanks for all who has worked tirelessly in this country for the vaccine rollout. Father, our world is imperfect and some places continue in conflict where inhumanity and lawlessness prevail. Today, we pray especially for Ethiopia, that peace will come to that land and a sense of justice and respect will prevail. We also remember other places in our world not at peace. For Yemen, Syria, Myanmar, and Hong Kong. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Um, we pray for our government, who daily make difficult decisions that affect us all. We pray that Britain will be seen as a place of love and care, of freedom and justice. Right now we think of those who live in fear, that our streets should be safe for all people. We pray for ourselves, for this parish of St Faith, for our families and friends, those who are near to us and those who live far away. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister the sick to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. We continue to pray for those most affected by this pandemic, those whose businesses have failed, those left without work, those who lack the resource to care for their children, those living alone and unable to mix with others, those whose livelihood depends on the performing arts, and for young people who see a world without hope. So let us pause in a moment of silence and bring to the Lord those on our own hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. In this time of passion tide, remember in your mercy all those gone before us who have been well-pleasing to you from eternity. 
preserve in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. We give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we like them be made perfect in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now share the peace together. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, also with you. and we share the peace to those who are near to us and through the screens to those who worship farther away. And our offertory hymn, which we shall now hear, is Just As I Am. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Now we give you thanks because for our salvation he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory and where life was lost their life has been restored. So we gladly thank you with angels praising you and saying Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread, and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, 
he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper had ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of death. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us with your loving arms, bring us with Mary, the mother of God, St. Faith, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in him. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be
Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servants of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us that are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. Amen. A few notices, first of all, to say a very big thank you to Dr. Tim Peppiot for the sermon and to remind you that we meet tomorrow at 7.30 when we will continue that discussion and Tim will be joining us to guide us in that. Um, to remind you also that after this service, we have our coffee and chat. Do stay. You may even want to continue to talk about the sermon on that many, many other things as well. The notices are on the pew sheets, and particularly about various collections, the basic bank, Nathan's retirement, and about uh, our giving at the moment and all the weekly activities. Now, this time we do need to be a little bit awake uh, in the notices because next week there is a big change. We shall start meeting in person again in the parish hall and that will mean we need to register if we are coming to the service either on eventbrite or by phone call there will not be an eight o'clock until easter sunday so no eight o'clock service next week but a 9 30 and 11 and if you're coming please register because it is Palm Sunday, we're beginning outside, so we will need the car park. There will be no parking in the parish hall car park. I hope you can remember all that. <laughs> and then 8 o'clock, 9.30 and 11, as usual, when we come to Easter Sunday. Well, I wish you all a very good week. And we now come as we seek God's blessing upon us in that week. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. And thanks be to God. God.